Welcome to another grading video where I take a watch and go through it carefully and allocate a grade so as to help value it in case I was going to buy it. Now this particular one uh, is my watch. I've had it for many years. I bought it from a New York collector who had two examples of this particular very rare reference and he very kindly sold me this one. So what is it? Well, uh, we can very clearly see from the um, the head-on view that we have short indices on the dial, we have a step on the dial, we have a dot next to 90. So we know it's um, an early 70s Speedmaster. It could be a 69 uh, until we turn it over. And when we turn it over, we see what all the fuss is about. And this is what we call a no NASA case back. There was a period of time between the straight writing case back and the stamped medallion engraved case back where rumor has it Amiga was in negotiations with NASA to have a recommendation on the back. And this was before they had agreed the wording. So this is what's known as the no NASA case back. It's extremely rare. It is only on the 71 and highly desirable, uh, often bought by accident rather than design. If you go looking for one, they're impossible to find. If you wish to uh, find one, I wouldn't even begin to know how to tell you where to find one. Uh, the best, of course, are the ones bought by accident. So let's go straight to the grading. The first thing to note is the quality of the dial. As ever, we uh, view the surface of the dial all around the dial and make sure there's no scratches, blemishes, oil coming up through the holes, nothing. And in this dial, there is nothing. It's an absolutely flawless surface and that is something great. The markers are not the most attractive color I've ever seen, but also by a long way, not the most unattractive because they are actually yellow, um, yellowish, and they're complete and they cover all the markers. So that's very good. The print itself is all present, correct. T-Swiss made T, three lines of text, painted logo. Yep, that's absolutely perfect. And I would say we're getting on for an excellent dial. It's, it's pretty hard to fault the dial. Uh, the next thing I always look at is the bezel. Here we have the dot next to 90 uh, ne next to 90 and tall tachometer letters. The This particular bezel has a slight fade on it. It's not black black. It's got a slight fade. There's no real damage anywhere. It's pretty hard to fault other than that fade. And next we look at the case and the lines are pretty well defined the sides don't look too damaged and i can't see any strong brushing but i also i mean i don't think i don't think this case has been polished it may have been but i don't think so the crown is uh, original specification as are the pushers although judging by the cleanliness of them perhaps they've been serviced if we look at this case back, the very case back that is all the fuss is about, we can see there is uh, a single scratch, which funnily enough, I can't find on the video immediately. There you go. And that's a shame. That's a shame. Now, let's uh, check inside. Always, if I'm looking at a watch, I always want to see inside. If I can't, then my valuation has to be downgraded as though I can't see inside and, the, and as though there might be all sorts of issues going on. Inside the case back, what have we got? Very clearly, we have the 145022-71 with a no purlage case back 
Uh, I've yet to come to a solid idea of why some case specs have purlage and some don't. We'll lift the dust cover off. And here we see the movement. And here we see the movement. Well, uh, first sight, uh, all the bridges are matching color. The movement ring has two slots here and here. I suspect this is a service movement ring. The white metal parts are all shiny and they're great. Uh, unfortunately, this movement has been worked on by somebody without the skills that I would expect uh, in an 861 service technician. And if we zoom in super close, we can see there are scratches where he has tried to uh, fit a part and slipped or not got a purchase on the actual part and has caused all this damage. This is incredibly disappointing. It's not something I ever expect to see. And indeed, even when I'm pessimistic at auction and things like that, if I can't see the movement, I would not expect to see this sort of damage. It's it's annoying. All sorts of things. You could replace the, the plates. You could uh, perhaps polish it out. Uh, it's not worth doing. It's just an annoying thing. And it makes it downgrades the value of the watch when one has the full opportunity to assess it. However, if this watch was in auction, I don't think anybody would take the slightest bit of notice of the condition of the movement. Uh, they'll be after it because it's a no NASA and they won't care if the movement has one or two cosmetic scratches in it. And there we've refitted the cover. Uh, this watch, as you can tell, has a um, one, uh, 171 bracelet. It's very loose, the bracelet. It's, um, got, it's very loose. Uh, look at that opener. I, I just use gravity to let it find the threads. I don't do it up too much. I had a conversation with Simon Fries about case backs, and I was reminded of what a mechanic once told me about oil filters and how you didn't want to screw it up so tight you couldn't get it undone and you didn't want to screw it up so tight that you squash the gasket so it didn't work properly so you want to screw the case back up just enough uh, 1171 bracelet as we can see um, it's got an additional number 11 on it which maybe that's an American bracelet or something uh, the 1171 bracelet has the trapeze uh, shape clasp so that's a nice touch it's look it's a bit loose but uh, I don't usually put much on for a 1171 bracelet. What's the overall grade? Well, the dial is excellent. The bezel is good. The case is very good. The movement is good. So what is it overall? Overall, it's between good and very good, m closer to very good than good. Uh, however, if you were to be... Um, if you would be to go to an auction and to see a, a no NASA and to use my price chart and to be religious about what it says on the price chart, you would miss out on buying the watch because there may be somebody there who's ready to ha take an emotional premium on the watch and, and they just want to buy it. And the reason is because if you are a collector and you want this no NASA case back, uh, you can go years without seeing one and like buses maybe two or three will come along at once but in general you can go for years without seeing them it's a very very rare watch uh, it's a great pleasure to own and this particular example is overall very attractive and as i said i rate it between good and very good but if I was buying, I'd probably add a premium and go well over very good. In